Hi, I'm Mike. And I'm Morgan. And this is EV in the Sticks. So today... So today we're doing episode two of our series on EV basics. And we thought one of the good places to begin is on EV maintenance. And as a special treat today, in addition to us, we're bringing on a special guest who is an ASE certified parts specialist. So with that, Morgan, I assume you're going to show us how to change the oil on this vehicle. Is that correct? We're going to change the oil, the oil filter, the transmission filter. Ought to take me about 30 seconds. All right. That's because unlike an ICE vehicle that has oil, transmissions, we don't have any of that stuff to do. We don't have alternators to fix. We don't have starters to fix. We water pumps. Water pump. We're just... Oil EVs pumps. EVs don't have any of these issues unless you're talking about the uh, PHEV. That's the uh, plug-in hybrid plug electric hybrid. vehicles still have to get all of that still have to have ice oil car maintenance. And do have starters and stuff. So, but in general, a PEV like what we own, none of that stuff even exists in the car. So with that, let's go ahead and get started. Okay, yeah, this is an awesome thing. It's this. This is a practically unopened hood. I've had a 30,000 miles, there isn't a single wrench been turned on this anywhere. And uh, Mike might have to bring the camera over here and I'm gonna explain some things that we're gonna be looking at and turn the flashlight on here. The things that we gotta have, look for. The first thing you need to do at least once a week on your EV is, this is something that EVers are not gonna really talk about a whole lot because it's, bad PR, they don't want you to know that this is a problem. But on an EV, you have heat sources in here. We got things to keep that battery going alive. We have a heater that heats that battery. And when the winter time comes, just like your house, mice likes to get in and stay warm. And so you have to open this weekly and you have to look. There's a heat source here and here and then you have the 12 volt battery here. All of this is gonna be warmer than their outside weather. And you wanna look and see if you have any mice nest anywhere in here, cause they will chew your wires up. You need to look about once a week. And I have thought about the idea of throwing some mothballs in here. Uh, clarify that I am not a GM mechanic. This is just how I plan on taking care of my vehicle. This is not uh, recommended by the manufacturer. Now, you'll wash your fluid, and then you have one here. This one goes to your battery. And that's coolant in there? It's in there, yes. One here, this runs your HVAC, your heater and your air conditioner. And that's cool. And this is for the uh, electrical vehicle. This is a 12-volt battery, just like in an ICE car, only this is a deep cycle, and it runs the computer and the windows. And to cover that a little more clearly, if your 12 volt battery goes bad, the computer can't talk to the charger and charge your car because there's a handshake that has to take place when you charge it. If a 12 volt battery goes bad because you left it outside all winter and didn't drive it like you will see on a car lot. These people in the car lots don't know how to maintain them. All they know is it won't charge when they plug it into the charger. Nine times out of 10, their 12 volt battery has gone bad. It's also true that if you're having a lot of software glitches, you can disconnect the negative battery terminal. Which is the one that's open. And this is the positive. This is the negative. And then reconnect it, and that will help reset your vehicle and will often take care of uh, software glitches. It's a good step to dealing with anything that might come up. Now, the main piece of thing I got right now today for maintenance is I happen to be out of washer fluid, so... 
We are going to fill the washer fluid right now. I got a full gallon and I'm bone dry empty, so we'll see how much it holds. And this is the first fill in this car. And there she goes, filling up. It's almost like there's a hole in it. And there you go, it holds exactly one gallon. Excellent. Let's take a moment and talk a little bit about brakes. So you told me that there's no oil pump, there's no fuel pump, water pump, there's no pulleys that go bad on these vehicles. And that's really exciting. What about brakes? Shouldn't you change your brakes every se- We have something in most of the EVs made in America today have regenerative brakings, which means when you let off the gas, the car will stop itself because it kicks in a generator on your wheels that generates electricity back to the battery, and that engages so strongly that it will actually stop your car. So when you push down on the gas, you go forward. When you let go, it stops. It will actually stop your car, and you can go up to a stoplight or a stop sign, and it will actually stop your car because it's charging that hard when you do that. If you're going 45 miles an hour, come to a red light and slow down, you're going to see 25 to 30 kilowatts being generated you've got a gauge inside on your dashboard you're going to make electricity as you're stopping. so we so that's the miracle of regenerative braking but, but that means you're not using friction brakes however there is a couple of scenarios you're driving down the highway in the sticks because we live in the sticks and a lot of highway driving you see a deer jump out in front of you this happens to everybody in the sticks you have to hit the brakes you got to stop and not hit the deer that's the only brake wear you're going to see just as an example, my uh, 2010 Ford Focus needed the uh, brakes changed on it at about 90,000 miles. My car has over 100,000 miles and is nowhere near needing brake pads or at this time. Yeah, my car's at 30,000 and, and the brakes have practically never been used. Well, how about we go ahead and talk about tires a little bit? And for this, I believe we're going to bring on our special guest Which who's going to have a trick to show our viewers on how to tell if your tires need to be changed or not. This is John Peterson. He's an ASE certified mechanic holding up Not his... a mechanic. Oh, pardon me. An ASE certified parts specialist uh, showing us his card there. Why don't you go ahead and show us that cool trick you were you were talking to us about on the uh, on seeing if tire is bad? Well, the legal limit for tire wear is three thirty seconds of an inch, and that's roughly the distance between the edge of a penny and the top of Lincoln's hair. So if you take any common standard penny and you stick it down in the main tread grooves and see where the tread block hits Lincoln, if the tread block were to be under Lincoln's hair like that, then the tire would need replaced. But obviously when I push the penny down, this tire still has plenty of room. And you wanna check that at all the main tread blocks and look for uneven wear across the tire. The other thing that most tires have is some form of a wear bar. In this case, we have them right here and here. And when the tread block wears down to be level with that bar is your 330 seconds. Um, and it's illegal to drive once you've hit that. Right. So check this regularly. Uh, that way you can save yourself money. Wait, if you know ahead of time you need tires and it's not an emergency, you can wait for a tire sale to pop up and save yourself some money. If it comes down to 
you're already below 330 seconds and you need tires right now, well, then you're just going to have to pay whatever you have to pay right that minute. So keep an eye on that. Well, and there's John. One, one more thing I want to talk about with these tires. Is that I've done some research on the tires when I was researching maintenance on buying this. There are two schools of thought that I've heard, and I don't know which one's correct. One group says that because they're so heavy, you're going to wear through a lot of tires. Uh, we just showed you the neighbor's tire here, my son's tire, that has... We have no idea how many miles he bought it with 70. So he's got 20,000 miles on him himself. I got 30,000 on these. His are worn more than mine. So they, he bought them with those tires. He doesn't know if the original owner ever changed them or when they changed them. But I don't think they've ever been changed. There's a second school of thought on these EVs that say because of the skateboard build of an EV, the weight is more evenly distributed in a vehicle so all the all the weight is spread out more evenly than on a nice vehicle and the tires last longer which school of thought is right i can't tell you you have to go to a lab and tell, you know that's we don't have but i do know this my ours are both good tires and uh personally we've each driven them 20 and thirty thousand miles and they're not showing the wear another Whichever, thing if the wear is uneven on a tire that's why you do tire rotations to try to even out the wear on a tire. Tire rotations are recommended by the manufacturer every 7,500 miles. I believe what we've already covered is a lot of the basic maintenance that you're going to see on an EV. Uh, the next thing we're going to show you is how to change the wiper blades because that's needed on the car right next to us. So this is the uh, second vehicle that requires a little bit of work. We need to do the windshield wiper blades for this 2017 Bolt EV. And uh, we're gonna ask our, our friendly ASC certified parts specialist, what sizes are required for the Chevrolet Bolt? The Chevy Bolt takes 26 inch wiper blades. Um, some wiper manufacturers may call for a 25 or a type of reverse connector on the passenger side and that's because of the way that they cross over each other and are facing opposite directions most cars don't have a setup like that but with these gm slide on connectors it's relatively simple there is a small button right here in this little square window and you're just going to push in that button and pull out the wiper the oem ones you might have to hook it up a little bit to get it all the way out and then these slide back in. Just make sure you get wiper blades that have adapters for this connector in the package because this is not the standard wiper connection. Thanks for that help, John. We have now covered the maintenance that's required on TVs. As always, remember that we are not GM certified mechanics and to follow your manufacturer guidelines. And this is EV, EV in, in the, the Sticks. sticks.